Good morning, my dear students. Today we will talk about living organisms' diversity and the principles of their classification. And the first we will talk about diversity of living organisms. We will talk about diversity in plants and diversity in animals, diversity in micro living organisms. And the first I will talk about diversity of animals. Diversity of animals animals are different in their size, shape, way of feeding, way of feeding and environment where they live. Environment where they live. So diversity of animals they are different in size, shape, way of feeding, environment where they live. And the first we will talk about the size. Some of them are small animals and some are big. Some animals are small and some are big. Small like rabbit, rat and lizard. Rabbit, rat and lizard. Big like elephant and rhinoceros. So some animals are small like rabbit, rat and lizard. Some are small like elephant and rhinoceros. We will talk about the environment where animals live. Some of them live in water and some live on land. Environment where they live, some of them live in water and some live on land. Live in water like fish, crocodiles and hippo. Some animals live on land like horse, dog and lions. Now we will talk about diversity of plants. In diversity of plants we will talk about diversity of plants. We will talk about plants and the size of leaves. In plants, some of them are short ones and some are huge trees. Short ones or huge trees. Short ones like clover and gerbier and some of them are huge trees like clover and uh, like camphor and palm tree again the lens some of them are short ones and some are huge tree, trees short ones like clover and gerbier but huge trees like camphor and palm tree but around the size of leaves some of them have small sized leaves small sized leaves and some of them have large sized leaves. Small sized leaves like Molchia plant but large sized leaves like banana plant. Again diversity of plants. We will talk about plants and size of leaves. Plants, some of them are short ones or huge trees. Short ones like clover and gardier. Huge trees like palm tree and cancer. Size of leaves, some of them are small sized leaves or large sized leaves. Small, small sized leaves like monochia. Large sized leaves like banana plant. Now we will talk about diversity of microorganisms. Diversity of microorganisms. Microorganisms, they are living organisms. Can't be seen by naked eye, but they are seen by microscope. They can be seen by microscope, that's why they are called microorganisms. They can't be seen by naked eye, they can be seen by microscope because they are very small. But they spread everywhere.
everywhere around us in air, water, and soil. Microorganisms exist in cold water and they can be seen only by microscope. We will make an experiment. We will take a sample of cold water and we look at it under the microscope. We will find a lot of micro living organisms or unicellular living organisms. I will take a sample from the wound water and I will look at it under the microscope. I will see a lot of micro living organisms. You may see a lot of micro organisms. Most of them are unicellular living organisms such as amoeba, euglena and paramecium. Amoeba, paramecium and euglena. These microorganisms, they are different in shape and the way of movement. They are different in shape and the way of movement. Amoeba, paramecium and euglena. So microorganisms, as we said, they can't be seen by naked eye. They are seen by microscope, but they spread everywhere around us, air, water and soil. Microorganisms, we can, there are type of microorganisms, they are called the unicellular living organisms. Their bodies is made of only one cell, not multicellular. Humans, they have a lot of cells, so they are multicellular. But we will take a, a example, an example of microorganisms, unicellular. They are made of only one cell. For example, Amoeba, Eugenina, and Paramecium. Amoeba, Eugenina, and Paramecium. Amoeba, Eugenina, and Paramecium. They are different in shape and also way of movement. Way of movement as I said at the first our lesson today is about diversity and the principles of classification now we will talk about classification We will talk about taxonomy. Taxonomy, it is a branch of biology. The searches in similarities and the difference among living organisms. And the placing the similar one in groups according to a, cer a certain system. Give reason to easy their study. To easy their study. What is the name of this branch of biology of classification? Its name is taxonomy. Taxonomy, it is a branch of biology that search in similarities and the difference among living organisms and the place the similar one in one group according to a certain system to easy study. At the first, we will talk about classification of uh, plants, then we will talk about classification of animals. Classification of plants. of plants. We will talk about two points. The first point is external shape, shape and the second point is way of reproduction. Way of reproduction. Let's talk about the first point which is external shape. Number one, external as we know that plants have roots, stem and leaves, root, stem and leaves, but not all plants can be distinguished into root, stems and leaves, some plants can't, can't be distinguished, can't be, 
distinguished into root stem and leaves and some other plants can be distinguished into roots, stems and leaves some plants who can't differentiate between the root, stem and leaves all of them they have the same shape like algae in the sea you will see the algae algae with, with its three colors which are red, brown and green algae so some plants can't be distinguished into root root stems and leaves like algae with its three colors green red brown algae but most of other plants can be distinguished or are distinguished into roots stems and leaves like maize or corn I can differentiate between its root, stem, and leaves. They are clear, maize or corn, wheat, palm tree, and also camphor. Classification of plants, we will talk about external shape and way of reproduction. We studied the first point, which is external shape. External shape. Some plants can't be distinguished into roots, stems, and leaves, like, like algae, with its three colors, red algae, brown algae, and green algae. And some other plants, or most plants, can be distinguished into roots, stems, and leaves, like maize or corn, wheat, palm tree, and camphor. Now we will talk about the second point, which is way of reproduction. Number two, way of reproduction. Plants can reproduce by formation of spores or by formation of seeds. Plants can reproduce by formation of spores or by formation of seeds. The plants which can reproduce by spores, they are called ferns. Ferns, they are small terrestrial plants reproduced by spores. They are small terrestrial plants which can reproduce by spores. For example, Vagir ad, and Adiantum. Vagir Adiantum. They can reproduce by formation of spores. But some other plants can reproduce by formation of seeds. The plants which can reproduce by formation of seeds are two types. Some of them are gymnosperm, gymnosperm, and the other are angiosperm, angiosperms. Plants which can reproduce, uh, they can reproduce by formation of spores or by formation of seeds. Now we are talking about plants which are produced by seeds. There are two types, gemmosperm and angiosperm. Gemmosperms and angiosperms. Gemmosperms, they are, their seeds are formed inside a cone and not covered by a pericard. Their seeds, this is the cone, you will find the seeds inside a cone. And its seeds are not covered by a pericard. But angiosperms, the seeds are found inside a pericarp or fruit, fruit envelope. The seeds are covered by pericarp or fruit envelope. But here the plants are, or the seeds are not covered by a pericarp or fruit envelope. Angiosperms, their seeds are covered by pericarp or fruit 
ever. Example four generally proves that we, that uh, their seeds are formed inside a cone and not found inside or not covered by a pericarp or any fruit envelope like pine and cycas. Angiosperms, the seeds, their seeds are fo formed inside a pericarp. They are divided into two types, monocotyledon and dicotyledon. Mono, cotyledon, and dicotyledon. Monocotyledon like maize and wheat. Monocotyledon means that its seed is one part. It can't be divided into two parts. But dicotyledon, its seed, it's divided into two parts. It's dicotyledon. The seed is divided into two parts, like bean and peas. So angiosperms, the plants are covered by a pericarp. The seeds are covered by a pericarp or fruit envelope. Angiosperms, uh, are, they have another name which is flowering plants. Their names are flowering plants. Flowering plants means angiosperms. Angiosperms are divided or classified into monocotyledon and dicotyledon. Monocotyledon like maize and wheat. Dicotyledon like bean and peas. In plants, classification of plants, we talked about external shape and way of reproduction. Now we will talk about classification of animals. Classification of animals. In classification of animals, we will talk about the external shape or the presence of body support uh, and also we will talk about number of legs in arthropods and the number of teeth in mouths. We will talk about three points. Number one, classification of animals according to nature of body supporting. Number two, we will talk about number of legs and arth in arthropods, arthropods according to number of legs. And the third point we will talk about mammals and their teeth, presence of teeth. At the first we will talk about the first point which is nature of body support. Body support. The body support is two types. Some animals have soft bodies, they don't have any body support, and some of them are supported body. Supported body. Some of them are soft bodies and some are supported body. Soft bodies like jellyfish, octopus, and earthworm. Jellyfish, octopus, and earthworm. Some of them are supported body. The supported body is two types. The, sub, the body support may be external or internal. The body support may be external or internal. External like snails and muscles. But the internal support like vertebrates. Vertebrates. What are vertebrates? They are animals which have bones or they have a backbone. Vertebrates. They are animals which have backbone or vertebral column and they have bones. Such as fish, reptiles, birds, mammals. We can take an example for mammals like the cow and from uh, reptiles, crocodiles. But the turtle, it has the two types of the supporting, supported body. It has external support because it has 
the shell which is which cover its uh, its body and also it has internal support because it has bones or skeleton inside it the turtle has internal support and external support so the body support some of them are soft body and some are supported body soft body like jellyfish octopus and earthworm external support like snail and muscles supported body uh, it has it's two types external and internal external and internal as i said external is snail and muscles internal like vertebrates uh, like um, uh, mammals, fish, birds, reptiles. The turtle has the two types of body support. It has external and also internal. Um, now we will talk about the second point in the classification of animals, which is number of legs in arthropods. Number of legs number of legs jointed legs in arthropods what is the meaning of arthropods arthropods they are in the vertebrates in vertebrates they don't have vertebral column and they don't have backbone in in vertebrates and also Arthropods are characterized by the presence of jointed legs. Jointed legs. Its, its legs have joints. So they are characterized by they are invertebrates and they have jointed legs. Jointed legs. So arthropods they are invertebrates animals and they are characterized by the presence of jointed legs we can classify arthropods into three types according to number of legs we will classify them into insects arachnids and myriapods we will classify arthropods into three types insects arachnids and myriapods insects they have three pair of jointed legs three pair of jointed legs like this insect it has three pairs three from one side and the three jointed legs from the other side it has six legs or we can say three pairs three pairs Insects like ant, locust, peas, mosquito, flies, and cockroach. Arachnids, they have four pairs of jointed legs, like spider and scorpion. Myriapods, they have numerous legs. They have numerous legs, jointed legs, like scolopendra and gyllis. Again, insects, they have three pairs of jointed legs, like ant, locust, peas, mosquitoes, flies, and cockroach. Arachnids, they have four pairs of jointed legs, like spider and scorpion. Myriapods, they have numerous legs, they have numerous legs, many legs, Sco like scolopendra and gyllis. Now we will talk about the third point, we will talk about first and second, we will talk about the third, which is presence of teeth in mammals. Mammals. And teeth. Some mammals don't have any teeth, or we can call them edentates, edentates, or teethless mammals. Teethless 
mammals, they don't have any teeth. And some of them are having teeth. Having teeth. Mammals and teeth, some of them. Edentates or toothless mammals, they don't have any teeth and some having teeth. Toothless mammals like sloths and armadillo. And some of them having teeth mammals like and we will classify them into three groups. The first group, animals which have front teeth extending outward. Front teeth extending outward. Like the hedgehog. The hedgehog has front teeth extending outward to capture or to catch insects. Hedgehog. So, mammals which have teeth, we can classify them into uh, front teeth extending more outward, animals that have front teeth extending outward to capture insects like the hedgehog. The other type, it has sharp canines and molars, pointed canines and molars. with sharp projection, like lion, tiger, fox, and dog. Lion, tiger, fox, and dog. Now we'll talk about animals which have sharp incisors. Sharp incisors or incisors. We can classify them into two types according to number of incisors or incisors in each jaw. We can classify them into rodents and number one rodents and number two legomorphs. Rodents they have one pair of sharp incisors in each jaw in the upper jaw and in the lower jaw. But Legomorphus, they have two pairs of the sharp incisors in the upper jaw and one pair in the lower jaw. Examples of rodents, rat, jaguar, and squirrel. Example of Legomorphus, rabbits. Now we'll talk about a classification, nature of classification of living organisms. The scientist whose name is Linnaeus made a basic classification unit and its name is species. Linnaeus used a species as a fundamental unit of nature of classification system, classifi classifying system. Species is the basic classification unit for living organisms. Species we can find its definition here in our book. It is a group of more similar living organisms in shape that can reproduce to give new fertile individual. Fertile means it can reproduce, that able to reproduce and keep the existence of its species. So species, it is a group of more similar living organisms. They are similar living organisms in shape. And also, they can reproduce. It's very important that, that they can reproduce. And their babies, they, they will give, a, give birth for its baby. And its baby, when it grow up, it will be a fertile individual. It will be a fertile individual, which can reproduce, able to reproduce. And they keep the existence of their species. Africans, European, Asian, human, whatever their color or race, who also belong to one species which is human.